Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Games From Scratch and today we've got a news video, actually four news videos technically, about some really great open source projects getting a heck of a lot of funding. Uh, and it's leading to another conversation that's going to have to happen on this channel eventually, so hey, why not today? Uh, what are NFTs? So we're going to explain that and the reason why we're going to explain what an NFT is, is because an NFT backed company just gave four open source projects a heck of a lot of money. So we're going to start with yesterday's announcement. That is the Godot engine is receiving a hundred thousand dollars from OP games. Now, as you may be able to guess, because I'm referencing things like NFTs, uh, OP Games is in that segment, but they didn't just sponsor uh, Blender. As you can see, a number of projects got sponsored here. So we head on over. Uh, OP Games is now a corporate silver sponsor of the Blender uh, project. Uh, the uh, Phaser uh, HTML5 framework got money as well, as did the default game engine. So those four projects, Godot, Blender, uh, Phaser and Default all shared $300,000, $300, which is actually pretty cool. And it all came from a company called OP Games. And now's where we get into the buzzwords and BS. First, I'm going to take a bit of a diversion and we're going to go through explaining as best as I can what an NFT is, and then we'll get back to what they do. And NFTs are very polarizing in the industry. Some of the venture capitalist people out there, uh, they're like all about it. So there's a lot of scammers and um, people trying to scramble to make money. There's a lot of uh, negative connotations from this. But let's explain first what blockchain is. Now, blockchain is probably the most important thing. And blockchain, the simplest terms to put it, is it is a decentralized, unowned, but trusted database. Now, that is the two key things there are decentralized and trusted. So the algorithms of um, the way blockchain work basically means that you can't you can't muck with it, you can't screw with it, you can't forge stuff. And decentralized means it isn't owned by Microsoft or Google or Oracle or anything. It's actually spread around the world. In some ways, you can think of blockchain as peer to peer, like the old days of Napster, that kind of stuff, or BitTorrent, just on crack. This is a uh, when when a computer is mining blockchain, they're basically propagating this database around the world. So so when a record comes in, it doesn't require, you know, one bit of information. It requires 50, 100, 300, whatever, from various different sources. Now, the algorithms behind blockchain, way beyond what I want to get into and way beyond what I'm capable of understanding. But the simple way to think of blockchain is it's a database that nobody owns that you can trust what's in it. So what an NFT is, is an entry in that database. In fact, uh, for OP Games, the database they're using is the Ethereum blockchain. There's a number of different blockchains out there, uh, almost basically tied to each cryptocurrency out there. So, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, so on. Well, they're on the Ethereum blockchain. So in that little bit of information that's spread for the Ethereum coin, they're also throwing in little pieces of information. And those are what we would call NFTs. Now, it doesn't necessarily need to be Ethereum. It's, that is what OP Games is using as their blockchain. And it's actually quite expensive to, and, and the cost of, the, the term for making an NFT is called minting. So to get a little bit of data added into that blockchain, that, then all of those computers that are mining spread around the world and make it safe that costs money and the idea behind an nft essentially an nft is a receipt nothing more nothing less it's the nft part we'll get into what that actually literally means non-fungible token token receipt you think of it, it's, it's basically um, you get a piece of paper when you paid money. That is a token of sorts. Or if you go into an arcade and you give them money and they give you tokens that you can then in turn use for it. It's basically an identifier. That is it. Now, the non-fungible part is where it gets important. Fungible is literally just a word saying uh, something that has value generically. So, for example, a U.S. dollar is fungible. One U.S. dollar and any other one U.S. dollar, they're the exact same thing. doesn't matter. The individual dollar doesn't change a darn thing. They're considered a unit of, of value or currency that is not unique. It's basically the exact opposite of unique. They're ubiquitous. Same thing as um, an ounce of gold should be the same value as another ounce of gold of the same level of purity. Same for uh, a bin of soybeans or so on and so forth. It's basically an interchangeable unit of measure that has value. It's a currency of a generic type. That's what fungible means. Now, non-fungible means it's basically something of value that is not generic. It is a uniquely identified thing. Now, how much value does an NFT have? 
exactly as much as we prescribe to it. There's literally no more to it at all. Now, the weird thing is, why would you ever want to use an NFT? And a lot of what we were seeing, the early stuff, it's just scammery and bullshit. Realistically, most of what you're seeing NFTs implemented on now, it's just, it's scummery. It's, some of it's um, gimmicky, some of it's prospecting because this technology is new. Uh, but where you can start seeing where people like pie in the sky dream about it when it comes to something like game development is let's imagine I created a game and in my game I could create DLC. A DLC right now, it, it's infinite. So if I create uh, horse armor, we'll use that as an example, uh, and you can buy horse armor, I can buy horse armor, Joe can buy horse armor. Horse armor is just a generic, uh, unlimited asset. There's no constraints on it or anything. But what I could start doing with NFTs is start releasing generic, uh, sorry, uh, unique or limited DLC potential. I could, I could sell a plus five sword of awesomeness. And that plus five sword of awesomeness is then potentially tied to an NFT. Now, why wouldn't I just do it in my own database? And, and you know, that's DLC now. You could say limited edition DLC while being completely BS is possible now. But the thing is, I have to trust your database. And there's where NFTs come in. If you move it outside of the game engine and people agree that, um, you know, this URL or this GUID or whatever, this unique identifier inside of an NFT represents something and you start accepting it, what you allow to do is like a player economy that could then sell items. So for example, I could sell my plus five sort of awesomeness to uh, Jill down the street and I transfer my NFT ownership over to her wallet. Her wallet is tied to her game. And then boom, she now has that sword. I no longer have that sword. It gives a digital item the ability to be transferred and to give it potentially value. Now, you could do this potentially with say Steam or um, Xbox could do it. They could make it so that you could create items that exist outside of games. But that would only be centralized to their particular database. If you use with NFTs, the back end is blockchain. So realistically, all an NFT is, is a digital receipt, something that says person Y owns item X, and it's stored on a blockchain, which is a database that is available outside of any particular entity's control. So uh, it would allow if, for example, you had a Steam game and you had an Unreal Engine game and you wanted to have items transferred between them, you could do so with NFTs. Uh, you could have DLC that is not tied to any particular platform. So you could sell it and then have it show up in whatever versions that were out there. You could potentially have it go between different games where people implement it a different way. So there's where people are dreaming of salivating about the idea behind NFTs. But at the end of the day, do remember a blockchain is just a database that nobody owns. And it's really, really inefficient. You know, like the power usage of something like Microsoft SQL and uh, a single server running it versus the um, collective power of a number of mining stations around the world and the amount of power they generate. The blockchain is super inefficient, but it's decentralized and it's um, safe. So those are two really key combinations. And then what an NFT is, is just a unique database entry. That is it. That is all. So back to OP Games, basically, they are trying to create OP Arcade, which is a platform for players to discover HTML5 games, complete in tournaments, and buy their NFTs. So obviously, they want to sell NFTs. They're building this all around um, open source technology and so on. You see some of the games that they're working with right now, and you're like, oh, yeah, okay. So these are the games in the arcade right now, OP Arcade. Uh, they have an SDK. There is technology out there. So if you want to do it, nice thing is it is all open source. The technology they're working on, it is MIT licensed. And you probably look at this and go, this, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And, and web 3.0, let's get the, the buzzwords going out there. So it's, it's another online arcade that wants to try and sell you uh, avatars and such that move between the games. So basically they're trying to create a steam like web portal, but abstract away the, the tokens and the the winnings and the avatars and the items and the inventory out into NFT world. And you think, uh-huh. And then you find out that they have made $8.6 billion in funding. So the cool thing here is of that 8.6, well, now they're down to 8.3 because they just gave 0.3 to a number of open source projects, which, hey, I fully support. Kudos, great work. And you guys picked great projects to sponsor. So I love the default game engine. 
I love the Godot game engine. I love Blender. And I love Phaser. So good jobs. Kudos. You picked great projects, all of which will definitely benefit from your support. And as far as I understand it, none of those are going to be influenced to, you know, don't worry. You're not going to publish directly from um, the Godot game engine to NFT. It doesn't change the development. It just helps keep those three or four, sorry, four projects viable. So that part is good. In terms of who the... Uh, where the money is, and where the money is is where the scum is. Well, that is these people. These are the blockchain venture capital companies. These are the idiots that gave this company $8 million. And it's people like Republic Crypto, Ascentive Assets, Morningstar Ventures, uh, Mechanism Capitals, Polygon Studios, and Bitcoin, and then other investments coming from Mentha Partners, OKEx Dream Ventures, 7X Ventures, uh, Defy Alliance, and I want to point out very, very strenuously, GFS Ventures, is not game from scratch, has nothing to do with game from scratch. I am not a web 3.0 Bitcoin uh, venture capitalist vampire. So I just want you to know that right there. So these are these are the people throwing money at the idiots. These are, this is the source of it. And you know, obviously there is someone above them that hopes to, to make money off of it. But when you want to get to the end of it, this is the this is the money, this is the scum. So just yeah. So, you know, uh, in terms of the uh, the business end of here, here comes the jargon BS portion of this video. Uh, OP Games is building a platform that combines non-fungible tokens, NFTs, which hopefully you understand what they are now, and decentralized autonomous organizations, blah, 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 working with developers to create games that they can collaborate on with, in their, with their communities. Uh, platform will incorporate a play and earn model, a variation on a pillar of game five movement, blah, 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 blah. Company's player-facing gateway is OP Arcade, where communities discover HTML5 games, compete for prizes and tournaments, participate in a progressive crypto economy. So yeah, that's... Blah, 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 blah. Arcade is built on developer-friendly near protocol. OP Games uh, will supply the creation of up to 500 games by the end of 2022. So the good news is, if you're making smallish arcade games and you're willing to... Um, I don't know, ride the NFT bandwagon. Sounds like there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of jobs being funded there. Uh, small little arcade style games. 500 games by the end of 2022. It's okay. Um, venture created by a team of game industry veterans launching its Genesis NFT project, Arcadians, on October the 12th. Um, we'll see that in a second. The inaugural series of avatars for OP uh, platforms are built on open source tools created by OP Games and are one of the pillars of the upcoming OP Games meta. meta basically, anytime you see that word, it's BS. Just, just get used to that. Uh, and then here you can see it is built on Ethereum. So, like I said, the blockchain, you can think of blockchain as a database. Well, there's different databases out there. There's a Bitcoin database, there's an Ethereum database, and so on and so forth. And their initial project is Arcadians, and it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty sparse. So if you want if you want an avatar, so basically think of this as like uh, I, I don't know uh, what are the, what are the Microsoft ones called the Xbox avatars? Gravit? No, not Gravitar. Anyways, if you want uh, to buy your own, you can do so. Cool thing is again they are they're uh, definitely backing uh, a number of cool projects. Uh, but this is the starting point here. Uh, 10,000 unique avatars. They want to basically start selling these and that's where they're going to, to make their money. Uh, so that's it. Right now you can mint. Again, mint. Uh, you can look at that as basically create a database entry if you want to do the quickest, easiest terminology. F stands for Ethereum, which you can think of as the uh, blockchain database Ethereum, uh, which again is spread around the world by all of the people out there that are mining Ethereum. And this is a little bit of data that will sit on top of it. And uh, that is what it will cost you uh, to enter the arcade. If you're curious what that actually translates into real world dollars. 0 0.055 Ethereum is currently $253. So uh, welcome to the uh, gold rush or the tulip trade of 2021. Uh, yeah. And the good news is you can uh, purchase a maximum of 20. Uh, so that's uh, <laughs> $5,000 if you, if you want to if you want to spend $5,000. Now, the weirdest thing is right now, there is so much stupidity around this whole thing that, um, yeah, uh, people are spending the money and people are getting rich off of stupidity. And do be aware, there's also a lot of scammery going along, people doing this kind of thing, selling art, but selling art they don't own the rights to. There is no such thing as DMCA for um, 
you know, blockchain driven assets. It's just not a reality. So NFTs are full of scumbags and prospectors and so on. But the fundamental technology itself will succeed in some form. I don't know if it's going to be in this form, uh, but in some ways, a digital receipt that is not stored on a centralized database controlled by a single company or government, there's power there. I just don't think that this is the use for it. But interestingly enough, the Godot game engine, the Blender open source project, the Phaser HTML5 framework, and the default game engine all just got money because of NFTs. So they can't be all bad. So let me know what you think of uh, OP games, of the sponsorships, of NFTs in general, of Web 3.0, of friggin' Metaverse. Let me know all of these things, comments down below. And if you disagree with my summary of things or you have a different explanation or, you know, I'm, I'm keeping things intentionally vague to try and make it as understandable as possible. But if you want to do a correction or a correlation, do that down below as well. And let's try to keep this one civil. All right, that's it. I will talk to you all later. And congratulations to Godot, Blender, Phaser, and Default. Hopefully that money is useful. Talk to you later. Goodbye.